Our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Joanne from Florida, go ahead. Thank you. Um, the healing testimonies given here go deep into our consciousness and are there when we need them, and continuing in their healing power. And um, this was again proven to me recently. Last week, I woke up with a painful cramp or charley horse in my leg, and I immediately remembered a testimony Sharon gave about a year ago about a healing of a charley horse in her leg. And she had said, quote, I don't have a horse in my leg, and it's not named Charlie, end quote. Well, I laughed when I remembered this, and with that, the pain instantly vanished. It was dismissed. And Mrs. Zetti says in Science and Health, quote, dismiss it with an abiding conviction that it is illegitimate. And that's what happened. I'm so grateful for the healing power of Christian science that everyone here testifies to. I'm also grateful for all the teaching and practitioner support that I have received here and for membership in this church. Thank you for this service tonight, for those comforting readings and hymns, and I'm so glad to be here with you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave from Florida, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm on the master board of our community, and we just held elections for several openings on our board. We were concerned about a couple of the people who were running. They supposedly had a lot of support, and to put it politely, they would not have been good for business. I asked a practitioner for help and was told to know that God is governing and everybody will be in their right place. Well, last Friday, the ballots were counted, and the right people won. I'm very grateful for how it all worked out. God was truly governing. I'm grateful for Christian Science to be a member here, for the work of the practitioner, and thank you very much for those readings. Thank you. Thank you. Craig. I just want to give gratitude fairly for those, those very good readings. I've learned so much since I've been here through Mary Baker Ready and our practitioners and many early workers, their writings. More about the nature of God and how we and I can be more like that, or at least see it, because we always were and will be. And it feels good. Well, one sticky point was that I was told about tithing, and, and I've been trying to tithe, but after paying monthly bills, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But, and so I had to figure out a way, but you know, it's the right thing because it's, God provides the employment and the income and his nature would be to support any good thing. And this church definitely is that. So yeah, <clears throat> I didn't want to force the issue, but it came to me while I was in, just about going to sleep the other night that I, there is a way that I can tithe regularly. It just turned out that I have a bank account that is now gonna be giving me enough interest each year to tithe. So I don't have to worry about paying it monthly or weekly, but just have my finance guy, you know, or he said it was cool, just annually do it. And then <clears throat> it's, it'll, it's uh, like a fact. So God makes the way easily and rightly to do what's right and natural. No strain. I thank God for this church and what God unfolds. Thank you. Carol from California. Go ahead. Okay. Since, well, since I tuned into Plainfield one Saturday and heard immediately, good morning, Carol. I have become more acquainted with my truth. Mrs. Singletary was welcoming another Carol to Bible study, but the little shock that went through me at that moment gave me direction to call Plainfield to ask for help. Since that good morning Carol greeting, I have become a member 
the first church I ever joined, and my life increasingly shows the joy and light of spirit. It is the love and the structure of the church that keep me practicing life in Christ and in the Christ spirit every day. Ideas come when I need a solution. Supply comes to meet my needs. Lessons come to remind me where I fall short of my commandments. And here's a little example. So I was doing DoorDash about a week ago. And sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's really challenging. I was getting a lot of double orders, which I don't like to take because the first order, the food will get cold sometimes. I was having app trouble. You do the job through an app on your phone. I dropped an order off at the wrong door. So all night I was just changing my thoughts. Carol. Carol, Carol, I was just talking to myself all night, going to positive because I was just trying to be calm and be with Christ. Finally, the when I the guy called the customer called me, and he was so nice and he was so calm and I was so all night I was fighting impatience and frustration, and I told him I could fix it, but I have to drop off this other order first, and he said, "Oh, that's fine." And I was like, are you sure you can call the company? Oh, no, we'll wait. That's fine. So I went back, and the wrong door, the food was still there. So I put it at his door, and I told him, if you don't, if your food's not fresh enough, you can call the company, and they'll make a solution for you. He said, oh, no, it hasn't been opened. That's fine. I was just so struck by how what I was trying to achieve all night, they were just like, God showed me the perfect example right there. And I was just like, how did they do that? So, but anyway, it was so cool. That was my lesson. Don't give up, Carol. It's achievable. So, to end, to the end appropriately, I'm so happy to be a part of the Christian science, oh, of, of your church. I'm so, come on, I'm so happy to be part of all this. And the practitioners paved the way. We have to give them yay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Shardell. Good evening. I offer my thanks and gratitude to God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and my practitioner for learning about prayer and thanksgiving to God, especially now, after I made a grave mistake in one of my duties. I'm on my mental bended knees more than ever. I am deeply sorry, but unless I change, it is all to no avail. In the lesson this week, it was Magdalene in her devotion and purity who was forgiven much because she loved much. Last week, we were reminded in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 8 of the pure in heart and how they are the ones who see God. I pray with fervent desire to mind and obey the mind that made me, and then I should not slip so hard, because I know God accepts righteous prayers and actions. Many years ago, I read about a man who wanted to work for God, and then in his fine efforts, he thought, well, it looks like I could at least help God work. And much later, he decided that he would watch God work and continue to do his very best. Now I'd like to read two lines from hymn 341. If we live a life of prayer, God is present everywhere. God does the work, but I am here to humbly serve him. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. Before coming to Plainfield, whatever feeling I had when I was waking up in the morning seemed to dictate how I felt all day, unless someone or something came along and made it worse. And because of this, for years I thought I was a naturally unhappy and depressed person. I'm very grateful for how Christian Science 
practitioner support, and finding my place in working for the church has helped me to have peace and joy the majority of the time. I'm grateful to have learned here that happiness is truly my natural state, providing I am striving to listen and obey God to the best of my ability. And now if some negative thought or emotion does try to come in, I've learned to quickly examine it to see if I need to watch and pray about something, or if it is just a baseless attack on my ability to be useful to God and this church. It is wonderful for how coming to understand that God is the only power and that he created me and all of us for a good purpose sure makes being positive and hopeful well within reach every moment of the day. I'm so grateful for this science and for all that being a member here has blessed me with. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the beautiful music to start us out with. During last uh, Sunday roundtable, a line by Mrs. Eddy was shared from the course in Divinity and General Collectini, or known as the Blue Book, page 17, that said, quote, If you heal yourself of self-justification, you will lift yourself into the kingdom of heaven, end quote. Mrs. Eddy instructs in Science and Health that we should heed these Christly warnings and listen to those warning of the foe in ambush. So I want to express my gratitude tonight for the help of my Plainfield practitioner who is willing to point out these, was willing to point out these behaviors in me and teach me through healing a way out. Through her regular practitioner support, she helped lift me out of my thoughts of self-focus, always on my problems, what I needed to do, my activities, what I was interested in, and with no God in the middle of it. At first, I could not see or trust this principle of getting out of self, and very often I would justify my choices or reactions and blaming. As these attitudes were challenged and replaced by practical Christian science living, expressing gratitude, keeping my focus on the Bible and Mrs. Eddy's writings, doing prayer watches, and not allowing wrong to rule the right, I started to experience healing, both uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, and transformation in my life. And there was more peace, joy, and patience, and strength. I'm very grateful to uh, get away from this old depressive sense that just focused on self and looking out and learning to live a life of purpose and being useful to God. I'm very grateful to be on this journey. I'm very grateful for Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and this church. Thank you. Ingrid. Ingrid from California. Go ahead. Hello, thank you for uh, this beautiful prayer gathering. I am very grateful for all what I have learned in this science of the Christ, so amazing. Um, and uh, expressing gratitude for a very great help that we got um, helping a houseless people that had just gotten an RV or a mobile home to uh, live in it because that's the only thing that now he can do. But it was an old vehicle and uh, it was very, in a very bad shape in every sense, even cleanliness. And uh, he was very desperate to uh be able to sleep in a, in a place where you know it was not all with all kinds of things and uh it was very wonderful to know that divine love was helping us to help him and uh so we were able to get a crew and uh go with him which uh 
ended up moving to another place, to a church that let him stay there for a couple of days uh, so that he could do the work because on the street he couldn't. And uh, But it was okay. Everybody went all the way there and we helped him. And it was so wonderful to see how working together, uh, everything can be done and anything can be accomplished. Like all the paint was done, the uh, the floor was done, the just everything, everything uh, amazing in, in just one day. Uh, because other people came to help, because other people care to come and do something. Um, I was reading that uh, from. Uh, maybe because it is actually something about that. It says that uh, the way to do something is by doing it, and the way to help is by helping. That is not the exact quote, but it's the exact meaning. And I thought, like, this is so simple, really, but sometimes we don't get it, and we, uh, you know, just keep on going around or talking or stuff, but not actually doing the deeds. And uh, this was such a beautiful example of that. Um, Just so grateful that we can always pray and listen and trust what God says and then go and do it and it will always go well. And I'm just really grateful for that, especially with my work here in Los Angeles with the houseless is a great help. And thank you so much, all of you, for preparing this space and beautiful inspiration for us. Thank you. Day Day from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm thankful for our Sunday school and all of our Sunday school teachers. This week, my children have been reciting the five G's that they recently learned in Sunday school class, both in the morning and before bed. To understand that God good guards, guides, and governs is the foundation of what I'm learning in Christian science. And it's what's having the greatest effect on my life as I continue to grow. For children to grasp this understanding early on is something that will bless them and others in their experience for years to come. And this is a priceless gift that I'm most grateful for. Thank you so much for tonight's readings and for all the testimonies given so far and those still to be given tonight. I'm very grateful for this church and to be here tonight. Thank you. Luba Luba from Ohio, go ahead. Thank you. I'm so grateful to Plainfield Church for all that it provides concerning true Christian science and for wonderful practitioner support. Recently, with the weather warming up, lawn mowing season is here, and I've been in need of someone to cut the grass. During this time, <clears throat> excuse me, during this time, I'm so very grateful that my neighbors have helped with that and that my lawn has been nicely cut. In the meantime, I believe I have found the right person to continue with that uh, the rest of the year. I'm very grateful that God provides and that there is no lack of anything. Thanks so much for tonight's reading, the music, and I'm very grateful to be here this evening. Thank you. Uh, This is Bruce. Um, very grateful for one passage in our lesson this week. It's from Isaiah. It says, I, even I, am he, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake. And I must say I'm so thankful for the Plainfield Christian Science Church. I'm sure all my life I try to do well and be good and all that other stuff that everybody really does aspire to. But usually it was all human effort, and I could go on and on about how inferior that method is about. But after reading this passage, that I, we're talking about God, 
am the one that removes the transgressions, and he does it for a specific purpose, for mine own name's sake. And when I started learning about this sort of thing here in Plainfield, it made a world of difference. Instead of me trying to make myself right, dear God, show me the true model, and I will humbly follow as best I can. And you lead the way. And it's done wonders for me. And I've had just one quick example of that recently. Last Sunday, I had the privilege of watching this absolutely adorable uh, video of the Sunday school children reciting the 23rd Psalm. And I must say, it was about the most adorable thing anybody's ever seen. And it was quite an example for me because later on that day, I was going from activity to activity. And sometimes it feels like I'm just moving a little bit too fast. So I decided I'm just going to take a moment here at home and open up my Bible and read the 23rd Psalm. And I got as far as the point where it said, He restoreth my soul. And it's quite a beautiful thing to have your, store, your soul restored. But I think that the thing point it was making was that it was He that did it. And so I just found myself getting quiet with God. Dear God, restore unto me your image and likeness in my thought and actions today going forward. Because I, by myself, am nothing. But in reality, I'm your servant. So please use me to do your will. And after I did that, I felt my dominion again. I went on to the next activity, and everything went very well. It was orderly and good. And so I'm so thankful for the lessons to learn here in the Plainfield Church. They're just quite wonderful. Sharon. When I was new to Christian science in this church, I used to suffer from hay fever. And when the time came for cutting grass, I used to have to stay in the house with the windows closed and the doors closed because I would suffer very much. So one of my first healings, I asked a Christian, pra Christian science practitioner here uh, if this could be healed, and she said yes. She said one idea of God cannot harm another idea of God. Well, that was the end of it. The next day I was outside cutting the grass. No problem at all, and it's been many years and I haven't suffered from any allergies again. I am just so grateful for Christian science, for practitioner help, for God giving us this wonderful way of life. And thank you for the readings. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful readings, uh, fairly, for tonight. I have a testimony from New York. She says that I would like to express my gratitude today about this recent healing. In the middle of last week, I started exhibiting signs of what at first appeared to be sore throat as the week days advanced, these symptoms were becoming more aggressive and alarming. I worked with some statements from the Blue Book and the Bible lesson, and some improvement was noted. However, by the weekend, I was in pain, had lost my sense of taste, smell, and appetite. My daughter called me during this time and noted that I was not feeling well. She is not a Christian scientist and immediately urged me to have a COVID test. I laughed and told her I would not. Nevertheless, after I hung up, I started to worry about the possibility of having what she's suggesting. The next day, I started to feel worse, and I called my practitioner and asked for help, prayerful support, and she gave me statements from the, our textbook, Science and Health, with key to the scriptures, like the scientific statement of being. And I also found this line in Science and Health, which says a physical diagnosis of disease 
since mortal mind must be the cause of disease, tends to induce disease. Thinking about this and knowing the truth, soon I realized I've been allowing myself to entertain the possibility of having this virus. I continued to read Science and Health and to affirm I could not be invaded by anything but God good. The symptoms started to disappear as the mist when the sun shines. Next day, I was fine. My appetite, my sense of smell and taste were back as well. I am so grateful for Christian Science, Mary Baker at Eddie, our textbook, Science and Health, we key to the scriptures for the practitioner support and for Plainfield Church. I would like to give my gratitude for this book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. It really does have everything. And I'm so glad to see uh, or learn Mrs. Eddy's own example of obeying God and all the Christian science demands, all that Christian science demands. Sometimes I ask myself if I am doing this just so I can be sure that I am obeying what it demands. I'm finding more and more how powerful and effective the law, I am all, obeyed, helps to overcome every temptation. Recently, there seemed to be a deluge, I would call it, of, of, of um, uh, careful support from all angles. So many, 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 many calls. But how wonderful it is that God does prepare us for whatever is ahead, if we are walking closely with him. I remember clearly that the early mornings before this, I heard very distinctly, I am all, stand. I, I pondered this and I prayed with it, but the saying was so strong. And I know that's what helped me during that, this, these times when there was seemed to be so many calls. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't shaken. I was, there was such a calm. I think that's what they call the destructive calm that shuts error up. I was, I felt really calm in handling it all. And I knew it wasn't me doing anything, but the truth that I heard early in the morning, I am so truly grateful for finding Plainfield, for it is here that I learned to not just read a lot, but to read, listen to God, and practice this wonderful saving gift to all mankind. I'm so grateful to be here tonight, thankful for all the testimonies that really prove that what is in that book, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, is our saving gift. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Mary. Good evening, everyone. Um, first are the comments on the church website bulletin board, the first from California. Expressing gratitude to God, Mary Baker Eddy, Plainfield Christian Science. So much light and direction to live. Thank you. And then France. Dear Faith, Jared, Bruce, and others contributing to the musical beat of our lives, thank you for your continuous work. I work in front of the computer 14 hours a day, hardly ever getting up from it, trying to solve problems of others most of the time. It is easy to lose track and think unscientific thoughts. So lately I set my time, my telephone, so lately, I set my telephone ringer to play your Peace on Earth so that before I pick up the phone, I get my thoughts right. I also set an alarm for every two hours during the day when certain hymns start playing just to remind myself to take a short minute prayer and get out of the rat race for a moment. My favorites are If We Ever Needed the Lord Before and I Go to the Rock. Needless to say, it also gets me up from the table for a bit of boogie. 
So now I am fully compliant with that homework and safety principles. That's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful suggestions. And then Virginia, my granddaughter Maggie, who is 10, is so enjoying and benefiting from our wonderful Sunday school for young people. Every week, one of our members, Linda, emails me the children's lessons for that Sunday, and I forward it to my daughter, who prints it up and shares it with Maggie. We are all so grateful for these simple truths that are presented in such a fun way. Maggie loves them, and my daughter and I rejoice that she is receiving Christian science in these easy-to-understand lessons. And that's available for any child who wants to join in on our Sunday school. And then here's a, a note from South Carolina. I am so grateful for all your offerings. I listen to the round tables and readings of articles online whenever I can during every week. The truths you send in your printed pieces are so needed and I am so grateful that you send them to me for I cherish them, especially the Liberator magazine. I feel I am kindred spirits with you all. I am a member of a small society which I feel needs my thought for support and also of an association which I work for as well and love dearly. Still I feel that your church put forth the, put forth, put forth the additional love of truth that fulfills my need and I appreciate it so very much. All that you are doing for Mrs. Eddy her, and her cause with love and gratitude. And then a testimony from California. I wanted to express gratitude tonight for the wonderful lessons I'm learning from attending services at the Plainfield Christian Science Independent Church and the fruitage from our weekly lessons, watches and round tables. A few weeks ago, I learned that the importance of forgiving another is not just to bless us in the act of forgiving, but to bless the other person because our act of forgiveness allows them to start forgiving themselves. Today, while speaking with my Plainfield practitioner about a message my son had texted to me, I realized a new application of this reciprocal action. When I do something to bless someone, the blessing doesn't become a blessing to the other person until gratitude is felt and expressed. I realized this when my son said a sent a heartfelt thanks to me for my presence in his life. That felt great, but my doings were, were not done to feel great, but in demonstration of God's presence. What meant everything to me, though, was his expression of gratitude and acceptance of these blessings, which were really an acknowledgement of God and an opening for even more good to flow to him. I am so grateful for the truths I am learning at Plainfield and the little but formidable changes in thinking that are taking place in the way I look at life. I'm sending my love to you all. And then... Testimony from Missouri, Headache Healed. In working with the lesson this week, these words stuck out to me in the story of the prodigal son, quote, and when he came to himself, end quote. After studying these commentaries and reading some articles on this subject, it occurred to me that every healing we experience is an example of coming to ourselves. Then this morning I awoke with a headache. Recurring headaches have been a challenge for me over many years, and they used to put me out of commission for two or three days in a row. However, the words from our beloved leader found on page 391 of our textbook came quickly to me to meet this challenge. They are, quote, never plead guilty, end quote. So I immediately began to refute the reality of this claim of a headache. Also, in the article entitled Oneness by Bigdell Young, there is a paragraph that directly addresses this specific direct suggestion, so it stood out to me. It first cites this from miscellaneous writings, quote, 
A sense of evil is supposed to have spoken, been listened to, and afterwards to have formed an evil sense. What, what is this sense? Error versus truth. First, a supposition. Second, a false belief. Third, suffering. Fourth, death. End quote. Bicknell Young then explains, quote, Let us illustrate. Some day a suggestion appears at the door of thought and says, You have a headache. This is suggestion. If you do not detect it there, you may say, I have a headache. And then it becomes a belief. And if you, not, if you do not detect it there, you suffer from it. If you detect it at the beginning and say, I do not have a headache, it stops at the supposition and never goes through the other three beliefs. End quote. So, I immediately detected the claim of headache as a suggestion and then declared repeatedly in my thought, I do not have a headache. As I got up and prepared for a busy day, I refused to plead guilty to this suggestion at the door of my thought. I endeavored to control thought, as was in integral to John Wyndham in meeting challenges while in prison, while in a prison cell during World, World War II, and as explained in his book, Ultimate Freedom. I've also been studying the specifics of how Mrs. Eddy healed by reading the book entitled The Healer, the Healing Work of Mary Baker Eddy by David Keeston. What has struck me most is how each challenge was met immediately. Over and over in the accounts of Mrs. Eddy's healings, it is made clear that the demonstrations were made immediately or spontaneously, or within perhaps five minutes, or in a few moments, etc. So I have reasoned that if the promise made to us in John 14 is true that we will do even greater works than Jesus, then we must, then we can expect such quick healings too, just as Mrs. Eddy demonstrated on so many occasions and which are so inspiring to read in this valuable book by Keeston. So, thanks to the study of these books and Bicknell Young's articles, all recently mentioned during weekend study sec sessions, the challenge of a headache that tried to intrude on my thought this morning was met within about an hour as I came to myself, as the perfect child of our perfect Father, Mother, God. I am so grateful to now be able to move forward joyfully and with freedom as today unfolds. No words can adequately express my gratitude for Christ Jesus as our way shower our leader for her invaluable teachings and many healing demonstrations, and Plainfield Church for the ability of endless resources for our increased spiritual understanding of how to put Christian science into practice successfully. Thank you for those beautiful readings tonight on loving kindness certainly a most important topic. You know, there's a reason that our magazine is called Love is the Liberator, because love is always what heals and what frees us from the bondage of the carnal mind and all those etc. Some time ago I had read an article, and I, I don't really remember who wrote it, but it was about incurable diseases. And it was interesting because it said, you know, when doctors or the materia, material medica says something is incurable, it merely means that the cure is within, incurable. Perhaps the outward ways to heal it have failed or proved not successful. But, of course, we know God always heals, and there's nothing incurable to Him. And I thought, how true, because we've learned here, and talked about it this past Sunday, about the kingdom of God 
not coming with observation, but the kingdom of God is within us. And my goodness, to just think of that, the kingdom of God within us. So, of course, God would have the answer, the cure for any problem, whatever it calls itself. So there is nothing incurable. And as we look deep inside within ourselves, he'll tell us perhaps what we need to know, what we could do better. And it usually has to do with love, divine love. On page 96 in our book, Collectania, Mrs. Eddy says, there is no fatal mistake. There is no unforgivable wrong. There is no permanent injury. There is no incurable disease. There is no such thing as too late. I thought how beautiful that is. I have turned to that statement many times. It frees us from all these mortal laws that says, yep, too late, incurable, this, that, or the next thing, and brings us to the divine law that says all things are possible to him. I'm so grateful for these wonderful laws and rules we learn in science. We learn how to practice them and use them that brings about great reformation and healing to our lives. I'm very grateful to be with you all tonight. Thank you.